toured the world and uh, brought with them many, many thousands of Jacksonians from Mike Ross Travel. We welcome Mike Ross. Hi, Mike. Hey, Bart. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So you've taken my mother-in-law on many trips. I have. When I went to Spain, you were gracious enough to have coffee with us and, and uh, give us uh, insider tips. We appreciate that. More than welcome. Yeah, that was a great trip for you, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, yeah it worked thanks, really well. Thanks to all your, uh, your advice. So um, we were talking before the show, the pandemic, that really threw your business quite the curve. It did. Um, for the better part of two years. And as I had told you before, I kept moving the trips forward, thinking, oh, in two months it'll be all over. <laughs> Pandemic. <laughs> you know, we all have a certain level of stupidity. That was mine. Optimism uh, can be a, a negative here. So I kept moving them forward and forward and forward. And several trips I moved anywhere from five to seven times. Oh. And each time I moved them, was, as I said earlier, like picking up a Buick and running a marathon with it. The, co the coordination of all the details was immense. But it did allow for some quiet time in life that none of us, I mean, even as old as I am, none of us has ever had mm. uh, prior because we haven't had anything like this in our history since my grandmother was 25 years old in uh, 1918, you know, we hadn't had a pandemic. Now, did you have a trip? Uh, were you on, uh, on a trip when it hit? I wasn't. Um, I was out west skiing in Colorado and flew back, and that was in March of 2020, mm -hmm. and then less than four days later, everything stopped. I mean, it just, as we all remember, it came to a crashing close, just absolutely a crashing close. Yeah, we, so, have we have Jackson people that were trapped in yes, other countries. Yes, all over the world. Yeah. Yeah, I had very, very close friends who uh, uh, were in Egypt, and the government sent a plane to pick up three or four hundred uh, Germans who were there to bring them back to Germany. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah, but we're past that, and luckily we were fortunate to survive. Oh, we have some photographs you, here. Yeah, you brought some pictures. So Mike is going to have an evening of travel stories on March 14th. Right. Uh, more on that in just a few moments. But you brought some uh, photos. You've been, how many countries have you visited? Oh, I have no idea. No. I know, you're supposed to count them. Do you have a favorite? You're supposed to do that. <laughs> but, um, well, you're looking at it. Uh, if, I, if I could go no other place, I would, I would always pick Germany. I would always pick Munich. Mm -hmm. Um, because I lived there for a long time. I, I went to school there, I went to the University of Munich, and I have been there more often than any other place, and I loved it. Um, a few months ago, I took a group to Egypt and did the incredibly uh, stupid but photographic thing of sitting on a camel and <laughs> putting my fingers above the Great Pyramid, which is so stupid. <laughs> Um, the Sphinx is having work done on it, but, you know, she's 5,500 years old. You know, by now she needs a little work. <laughs> so, uh, this was in New Zealand. I was in New Zealand just in November. Oh, wow. See, um, I would love to go to Australia or New Zealand. They were wonderful. Uh, the, like I said, this is in New Zealand, the Dart River. This is back in Egypt. Uh, the Temple of Queen Hatshepsut. I'm writing a short story right now about this. We took a balloon ride over the Valley of the Kings. You know, one of the most incredible things I've ever done on a trip. It was really, really remarkable. Here we are back in Australia, Sydney. This is, these are all really very recent photographs. Mm. Um, and this is taken from a drone. I bought the picture. This I didn't buy. This I suited up and I climbed to the top of the Sydney Bridge. And it's not as stupid as it sounds. It does sound stupid, but they haven't lost very many people. So I thought, yeah, you know, why not? I'm going to try this. Had a great time. This oh, is in how, Greece. How high was the Sydney Bridge? How high? Yeah. 465 feet above oh, the water. Goodness. It's not that scary. This is on Santorini, the island of Santorini in Greece. Uh, also one of my very favorite spots. I don't know if I brought any pictures of Volterra. We're, we're back in... Uh, uh, Frankfurt Christmas Market. I've got a Christmas Market tour this year. It still does have a couple spots. That's about all I have left uh, on the trips this year. This is in Vienna. 
at Christmas time. Monica Collette, one of our viewers, wants to have a Christmas market in Jackson like these. Oh, it'd be Jackson. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, sure. Very, very, very successful. Um, and I think it, it would attract a lot of people. We're back in Frankfurt in Germany. Uh, because I, I speak German, this is in Innsbruck, uh, I tend to go to those countries, but I am going to France in about a month uh, with a full group. Uh, my French is okay, it's not great. My Italian's a lot better. My German is better than my English um, at this point. But now we are back Europeans, in Europeans, they, 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 there are certain countries that they are very fluent in, in English. Yeah, I would say probably Germany is more than ever, but the people whom I speak all speak German to me. So I can't always tell my people who speaks English and who does mm -hmm. not. Um, as a kid there, when there were so many, oh, I was a younger person uh, there, um, there were a lot of American servicemen there at the time. So they um, spoke English to the population. The population learned mm -hmm. a lot of English. Now we have far fewer and as a result, we, uh, we don't have as many people speaking quite as fluently as we did before, which is no problem for me, but for my people. You yeah. I think this is going to be very popular. The uh, long-running Kiwanis Travel Adventure Series uh, wrapped up. Uh, mm, I heard that. Yeah. So um, people, I think, are anxious to, to experience uh, the world through uh, stories and pictures, and that's what you're doing on March 14th. I am. I'm transitioning from taking groups of people eventually to writing stories about places that I go. Mm -hmm. And I've had 40 years of going places, so I have a lot of stories from the past. And somebody asked me if I wanted to make any money from it. I really don't care about making any money. But if I did care about that, I could write all the true stories and then blackmail the people to change <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their names. <laughs> there was wonderful stories about Rita. <laughs> Your mother-in-law, one, one of the most fun people I've ever, ever had the pleasure of taking on a trip. She was just spectacular. She loved going on trips with you, and she had been. She was all over the world, and it really opened up uh, the world to a lot of people by having uh, someone who n knew what they were doing, who organized everything. You scheduled yeah. all the... You even told people what to wear, which was... <laughs> Very helpful for us. Well, some people get PO'd about that. <laughs> right. It, it, you don't want to, st and I think this is the case just now in any country, you don't want to really stick out like an American in some countries. No. Yeah. Wearing a Hawaiian shirt and orange flip flops, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're going to stand out. The ugly American. Well, at least the poorly dressed. <laughs> So you're still, but you are still taking trips. Taking I am tours. still taking trips. I've got four public this year. I've got two more that I'm doing for family. Mm -hmm. So I have six total this year, and I have not got 2024 planned yet. If a group comes to me, this is what, this is what my plan is for the future. If a group comes to me, let's say you and a group of friends, and you say, we would like to go to the Netherlands and to northern Germany for a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Can you plan that? Yes, you know, and I can take you. Um, or to France or to Italy, one of my very, very favorite places to go. Um, I will do that, but as far as planning them and marketing them, like I've done now for the better part of 42 years, wow. um, I'm going to let people come to me now with their ideas on their timeline. So uh, I think many of you know Mike was the... German uh, program uh, had at Jackson High School, a German teacher uh, for how many years? Um, 113. Yes. So everyone that <laughs> speaks German in Jackson, and really it's a lot, there have been companies that have benefited by having uh, international people in Jackson with, uh, from Germany because of you. I, I know I that. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like the um, couple of places that you've got um, on your itinerary for the um, travel stories. Bike tours, um, Danube bike tour. I have a friend that's been trying to talk me into going on a, a bike tour mm -hmm. in Europe. 
Uh, most of them are around wine. They're con you know centered around wineries and right. And, but um, it sounds intriguing. Did you actually do a bike tour yourself? I have not done that yet. Yeah. Uh, that will be in May. And we start out in a um, German city named Passau. Actually, we go, we fly into Munich, mm -hmm. which for me is like going home. And so we take the train up to Passau, and then we get our, pick up our bikes, and we take a little over a week to get down to, uh, to Vienna. Then we have another couple of days in Vienna before we fly home. Yeah. But it averages only 25 miles a day. And if you go down the Danube, that's the key word, down, down. the Danube, <laughs> Um, you pretty well are headed down. You don't need a whole lot of athleticism to do this. Mm -hmm. So I've got some, a couple of, of my people have e-bikes uh, that they've chosen. Mm -hmm. um, I just chose a regular bike because I, I think that a lot of it you'll just be able to glide along. It's 25 miles. It's not that much no. per day. Well, you run miles every day. So I do. Sure. I still do that. Yeah. Now, people are concerned about... Um, couple of things with travel. One is, uh, is health and safety. How mm -hmm. do you feel about that right now? I think if you've got health and safety issues, you probably don't want to go to North Korea or Somalia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you have an interest to go to, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to diminish that. But if you have an interest to go to New Zealand, Australia, Germany, uh, Switzerland, these places are like University of Michigan Hospital. They are highly developed, uh, mm -hmm. extremely safe countries. Uh, you don't worry about somebody standing in a department store with an AK-47. We just don't have them. So you're very safe. You have excellent health care if you have any type of an accident or anything goes wrong with your health whatsoever. Now, there's no safety concerns. There are zero health concerns when you are traveling in a first world country. Uh, Britain to Italy, Spain to Greece, no problems whatsoever, none. I will go to Egypt. Um, I've told people that if you have severe heart conditions, if you are in the middle of chemotherapy, it's probably not best to go. Uh, you should be in pretty good condition. Uh, but other than that, no. Yeah. All right, so uh, those of you who want to hear great stories, you'll want to be in the audience for stories an evening of travel stories with Mike Ross on March 14th at Carnegie Branch, Jackson District Library. And you can register by sending Mike an email, mike at mikerosstravel.com. And interested in uh, upcoming tours or getting uh, some insider help, um, just visit mikerosstravel.com to uh, get in touch with Mike. It's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah. Uh, coming up March 14th, check it out. Mike Ross of Mike Ross Travel. Up next, one of our uh, downtown neighbors hanging out in the green room, Justin Schuberg. He's coming up next. Stay tuned. <laughs>